Welcome to the GameDev.TV Community Podcast. I'm your host KB, and I would like to introduce you to industry professionals and people who successfully made their path to the video game industry. I hope that you will enjoy the podcast and get useful tips that will bring you closer to achieving your dreams. Now, let's get right into the podcast. Awesome. Excited to be where here. Are you, where are you guys located? So I'm located in Los Angeles, and then they're located in Jacksonville, Florida. Yeah. And then, so you are CEO and founder of Hint Water, which was founded in 2005, right? I am. Yes. It's one of the best. I've, I got the little case of water, the pineapple, black cherry, the, the cherry, the, well, my favorite one is definitely the watermelon. That one is so good. Which one's your favorite? You know, it, it's sort of like asking who's my favorite child because That's I true. create them, right? So I, I like them all, but um, I go in waves. Right now I'm having clementine. I love okay. the clementine. Yeah, it's super good, uh, but I drink them all. I mean, you know, I'll go into, it's funny. I would say just maybe it's the color, but um, cherry, I always grab it because it's red. I don't know, mm. from the refrigerator, like I'll yeah, see it first. Like, yeah, and and um, but I really like I I like them all. I mean, mm. and then we do these smash ups. We'll <clears throat> we'll have like a little bit of uh, a little bit of extract left, and uh, and so then we'll just throw. We'll do a few thousand cases. We'll throw the blueberry together with the lemon, and oh really? And, uh, okay. Yeah, and we only sell those generally, although. We've been getting special requests from stores. We only sell those on our website at drinkhint.com. So, um, so we have over twenty flavors, yeah, on on our website, which is wow, really that's fun. a lot because I only had like the five that you guys sent me. But so far, I love them. It's it's interesting because when you drink them, it tastes like just regular water, but then the aftertaste is that sweetness that you get, and it's just like. It's yeah. different. I like it. And yeah. there's no sweeteners, so it's not doing anything in your system to. Um, to you know activate your brain to to re- really produce insulin so i mean that's kind of it's more science than you guys probably want but it's it's really interesting and fascinating what i learned about you know kind of beverages over the years and mm-hmm. um anyway that that in particular is something that's our product is really unique in that way awesome you, you said it doesn't um, affect the brain as in, it will it wouldn't rise the uh, glycemic index. So, pe- right. So what ha- So it's inter- when I started. I, um, are you guys recording yet? Or oh yeah, we we're good. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Awesome. Um. So when I started the company, that was that was kind of my aha moment when I was drinking a ton of diet coke, and I thought that diet coke was really good for me because it was diet. And I didn't sit there and think about it every day, but I certainly didn't think that there was anything wrong. And I had gained a bunch of weight. I had kids and had gained weight with all of my pregnancies and I couldn't lose the weight. And then I developed terrible adult acne, which I didn't even have as a teenager. And I kept thinking it was like some kind of makeup or products I was using on my skin and, you know, couldn't really figure it out. And then my energy levels had gone down and I had just left my job. I was at AOL. I had been there for seven years and was, you know, in a crazy, um, you know, role as vice president of e-commerce and shopping partnerships, was traveling like a nut and uh, finally just decided to take a couple of years off. So only saying that because I didn't really have an excuse for being so tired, right? Like I was taking time. I had three young kids, but I mean, I had help. I was I was kind of like, what's wrong with me finally? And that's when I uh, went to a bunch of different doctors and tried to kind of get to the bottom of it and then decided after sort of challenging um, my health issues with uh, with different diets and checking out different foods and really realized that I wasn't necessarily doing anything wrong, but I had given a pass to Diet Coke because I thought it was healthy. And then I looked at the label one day and Mm -hmm. there were over 30 ingredients that I didn't understand. And I thought, God, I care more about what I'm putting in my car than I do my own body. This is nuts. And so I tested it and just thought, okay, I'm going to give it up. And I've been drinking it for many years. And uh, people always ask, 
you know, did you go down to one or two? Nope. I cold turkey. I just said, I'm done. I'm not going to have it and see what happens for a couple of weeks. And I lost 24 pounds in two and a half weeks. Wow. Which is crazy. Right. And so back to your question, I mean, that's when I started realizing and then other things too, my skin cleared up, my energy levels were totally different. And that's when I really looked at kind of what, you know, my body had been through and, and, and again, not ever hearing about this. I was in tech. I wasn't in, you know, I wasn't a nutritionist. I, you know, took science, basic science in school, but I had never really paid attention. Insulin was something that a couple of my friends who had type two diabetes, had, I mean, type one diabetes had, but this was at a time when type two diabetes was just kind of starting to come into play, but we, I didn't really know anybody who had it. It was like 2% of the population 15 years ago had it. Now 45% of the population has type two diabetes or pre, or pre-diabetes. And, and uh, so type one, you're born with type two, you develop. And yeah. that's like, I that's agree. the definition that the consumer hears. And What's fascinating about it is that the majority of people who are getting type 2 diabetes actually claim to be watching their calories, eating and drinking diet and low fat. And somewhere along the way, we just don't connect that maybe that's the problem. Maybe we're putting sweeteners into our body and, and well, but it's not sugar. It's stevia. It's like, it's, yeah. Yeah. You spoke about science, and that's where my background comes in. I was going to say, it's when it gets in the body, the breakdown, it creates free radicals. So your body's not really used to it, so it sends the cells to do things that they're not normally programmed to do with normal sugar. And so that's when the problem begins. So now you have like a silent like agent for creating diabetes in a population that doesn't worry about what they're putting into their bodies. It's just like men only pay attention about cars, but we have a whole society that don't pay attention to like what we consume, but you drink water and your body becomes the water that you drink. Just like when you eat the banana, it's going to do the same thing. So we become everything we consume. But like you said, we didn't connect the dots. So yeah. how does, so you created a water because you started to see that you made a habit change, right? When you made the decision not to drink Coke. I did. But how did that affect everything else in your life? when you saw that just that one thing, that one change made that much like uh, effect? Well, I, I was, so I had taken a couple of years off after leaving tech and, you know, I think back on it now and I just wrote a book and talk a lot about it in, in the building of, of Hint as well that, you know, I was getting approached by a number of tech companies in Silicon Valley because I had built something, you know, with my team pretty great at AOL. And obviously there were lots of companies in Silicon Valley and all my friends were kind of living in in that world as well. But I think for me, I just felt that I had kind of been pigeonholed into being a tech executive. And I didn't hate being a tech executive. I actually enjoyed it. But I Mm -hmm. thought if I only have one life and one journey, is that what I am. Like I sort of fell into being right. in tech and I enjoyed it, but I thought, is that all I want to do? Exactly. Right. And, and, and I didn't know the answer. And I would talk to friends in tech and they'd say, well, you know, there's this great role at Google. There's this, you know, and, and I, again, I didn't not want to go there. I just wasn't jazzed and I couldn't yeah. explain it. And so I kept, searching and I had the luxury to be able to go and search. And again, I wasn't, it wasn't like I wasn't busy. I had three young kids that I was really enjoying as well. But when I stumbled upon this problem and solved it for myself Mm -hmm. around what I was drinking, and that's when I kind of spent this year sharing with people because when you lose that much weight and I continued to lose weight, I actually at one point thought I was sick because I was losing weight so fast because I had figured out what these diet sweeteners were doing in my body. Mm -hmm. People notice and they all wanted to know, what did I do? 
And, you know, or was I eating anymore? I mean, you know, it was like my body was trying to adjust to, the, you know, this whole new world. And they wanted to know if I was running marathons. I'm like, no, not really. I, I have always exercised, but not really. And so that was when I just kept thinking how this had changed my life so much and also just made me much more aware of what I was putting in my body and what I was going to put into my kids and my, my family's body. But then in addition, I thought how unfair it is for most consumers to live in this world that there is so much control over what we put into our body and what we're sold in stores. Yeah. And so it, it just, you know, it was kind of a big concept that was somewhat depressing to me, frankly, that I just thought we were living, we're programmed into, you know, walking into a local grocery store and not really knowing what goes into, you know, the money that is actually paid in order to get products on the shelf. And mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if it could be, um, you know, causing health issues. Right. Right. Exactly. It's it like, be... it's, it's like it's it's perception and and mm -hmm. the more gas is thrown on these products with celebrities and athletes and you know i really worst. right like i started mm -hmm. just going down this lane in my head again i didn't have a business that i was looking after so i probably had too much time on my hands but mm -hmm. i just thought like that's just wrong on a lot of levels and yeah. i just and i thought it was terrible and yet people were spending lots of money on diets and mm -hmm. shopping at fancy stores like Whole Foods. And mm -hmm. I thought, you know, people are willing to spend money to get healthy too. And yet there's just so much healthy perception out there versus healthy reality. And it's yeah. just disturbing. And so that's when I was, uh, I had been throwing slices of fruit in my water, just again, not even thinking that I was going to become an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. but just to sort of get rid of the boredom around plain water. I, I grew up in Scottsdale and I should have been drinking a lot more water than I was, but I didn't. And that's when I just had this idea one day of just slicing up fruit that was sitting on my counter and throw it in the glass. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, this is really all I need. I didn't even calculate if there was a calorie in there, right? People always say, yeah. well, I mean, were you trying to make a zero calorie drink? No. I just wanted it for taste. I just, I wanted just to be able to drink water. And they, and then people started asking me, oh, where did you get that pomegranate water? Because I would put it into like a huge cup and I'd walk mm -hmm. around. And I will always have different fruit in my water. And friends would ask me where I got oh, it. Cool. And, and I, you know, at some point, I think I was concerned about my friends because I just thought, why are they always asking me what's in my water? I mean, isn't it obvious <laughs> there's like ice and water and fruit? And, you know, it just, I don't know. Like, I just started laughing about it. And then I thought, gosh, it, it, I guess it is pretty unique. And I went to my local uh, store, Whole Foods, that had just opened in San Francisco and, and tried to find this product and everything had either sugar or at that time NutraSweet and and Splenda um, mm -hmm. were kind of the the diet sweetener of the day. And that's when I thought, okay, well, I'm trying to figure out what I'm gonna do in tech. Why don't I try and get a product on the shelf at Whole Foods? It'd just be mm -hmm. fun, you know, just to see if I could. And uh, and that's when I said, you know, I'm gonna write a little mini business plan and I'm just mm -hmm. going to do it again because I, I was curious. Um, but I also, I don't know, have you ever done something that you thought, you know, probably 99% likely that this doesn't work out, but oh, yeah. I don't know. I'm going to go try it, you know, just because it'll be mm -hmm. kind of fun. I mean, maybe you go try a sport, but you're just not sure if you're going to be good at it, but you're just like, yeah, whatever. I'll just laugh at myself and, you know, and you just end up being like it. really good. <laughs> yeah. Right. Or you're mm -hmm. not, but you yeah. learn along the way. And I think that's always been my kind of thinking that I, that if I'm all, if I'm ever on the fence, I, I'm more likely to go try than yeah. actually not do it. And I think it's with everything, you know, even yeah. if it's a new restaurant, right? That yeah, I'm I like the thinking. unknown. I'm, yeah. I'm, yeah, yeah, because I'm like, I did that already. Let's do something new. Yeah, yeah. and so that was me uh, with Hint. And so I took it to my local Whole Foods and I said, hey, how do I get a product on the shelf? And the guy was like, 
uh, well, you have to have a bottle and you have to have a label and you have to have a distributor. And I thought, okay, I, and I've been making it in my kitchen. So why don't I just try and get it on the shelf? And I, I remember leaving the store that day and thinking and going home in the car and thinking, wow, I mean, what is a distributor exactly? I mean, I know a distributor kind of gets it on the shelf, but where would I find one? And then I thought, well, I'll go back to the guy and ask him and tomorrow. And so I did. And every single day I thought, this is just so interesting because there's so many things I just don't know. Mm -hmm. And again, being, I was the youngest vice president at AOL, one of the only females. And I, I thought it, it, it's just, instead of having people always coming to me for the answers, I'm actually going to them, right? Which I thought was so cool. And I bring this up now because I talk a lot about lifelong learning. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. as we move up in the ranks and we get older, we're supposed to have all the answers, right? Mm -hmm. Except maybe in technology, maybe you're not supposed to have the answers, but you know what I mean? Like it's, <laughs> it's like you're, you're working in a company and you keep getting promoted and you get into this higher level, your job eventually, maybe you don't get to be CEO. Maybe you're a, sitting at a VP, you got mm -hmm. all these people underneath you and you're approving, you're telling them what to do, right. but your job isn't to learn. Yeah. You're not expanding and, anymore. You're just like, it's kind of like you plateaued. You're not yeah, going. And, so, mm -hmm. and I think that's where I was, but I couldn't articulate it that mm -hmm. I just was, I wanted to learn. I wanted to go back and be a student and people said, oh, you're going to go get your MBA. I'm like, no, I don't, I don't know. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't know what I mean by it. I just know yeah, that yeah. I want to go learn. And I think for me, jumping into the beverage industry. And again, mm -hmm. it wasn't clear to me until many years later that that's what was so intriguing to me that I just, I didn't know what I didn't know. Right. And yet it was interesting. And every day I'd wake up and I'd think, okay, there's a lot of hard stuff in there, yeah. um, but it's kind of cool. And I smiled every day and I thought, oh, I figured that one out. Now I know, now I know that, that a cap, what I was calling a cap, it's called mm -hmm. enclosure, and nobody knew what the heck I was talking about <laughs> when I said, you know, where do I what? buy those caps? And they're, and they're, they're like, like what? what? What's a cap? What? And and then all of a sudden, I, I'm I'm like, where do I buy those closures? And yes, then all a of a sudden, term. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, then people are, you know, then I'm one of them. Right. Right. Because I'm I'm using their <laughs> language. And I, and I said, and again, I would laugh about it because yeah. I just thought, this is just, too much, you know, Is what that? else am I going to run into? <laughs> and I, again, I would tell my tech friends at Google and they, they'd say, that's so funny. I mean, that's hysterical. And what do I do all day? I just tell people what to do. I mm -hmm. push the button and right. they're just, and I said, no, I'm not pushing any buttons. I'm, yeah. you know, driving my Grand Cherokee around and delivering cases. And I don't know, it's kind of cool. I'm not making, at that time, I wasn't taking a salary. I wasn't making any money and right. I'd come home and I had uh, four kids at this point under the age of six and luckily I'd help, but I just thought, I don't know, I, I'm smiling and I'm happy and I'm learning and, you know. Yeah, but and, it was something new. So totally. like, yeah. so that's like, it piqued your interest and it, took, it you were able to like take it to a new level, you know. I see. It seems like listening to your story, you were at a place where you knew you could do more and you had more potential, but you just couldn't serve it. Your environment wasn't supporting it. It didn't have the capacity for it. And then going out, you found that, hey, by this by this challenge within your own personal life, it took you in, on a new adventure. And it like it's really cool to see because once you started changing your perceptions and you had something to look forward to and... Mm -hmm. It like it was like a whole new world opened for, up to you. Like I can just see when you talk about it, like how you smile, and when mm -hmm. you're talking about driving around in your Grand Cherokee with the products and things. Like you didn't know where you were going, but you just knew that I needed to do it. And it sounds yeah. it sounds exciting. No, it is, <laughs> and, and it's something. It, it, so it, you know, even in, in my book, I call it living undaunted because mm -hmm. it's uh, it wasn't always comfortable. Right. I didn't know what I was doing. I had questions. I had doubts and about, you know, where I was going, but it was cool. And right. some days were really hard. And, you know, when I get a call from the school nurse that 
said that one broke their arm and then another one had strep throat. I'm like, I'm out for the day. Right. Mm -hmm. Like I, I, right. And it was just, I, I start again tomorrow, but I think that what I found was that it was, it's almost, it's almost like being an entrepreneur is, is kind of, I equate it to having a puzzle thrown in front of you that can never totally be solved. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's just, yeah, it always. just never ends. It just <laughs> keeps, adding, it keeps adding new pieces add on. And some days, right. You're, you are just like, Oh, that's where the pieces were. Mm-hmm. And, and then other days you, you know, find out that your dog ate a piece, right? Yeah. And it's just not oh, going to yeah. happen. And yeah. so you got to go around it and you got to figure mm-hmm. it out and come back to it. But that's yeah. the story. And well, this and, is back ordered and you need to wait for two weeks and you got to yeah. figure out how to move around this. And, and, so, <laughs> I think, and I think that that was the thing too, that I had worked at my first job in, I had worked in New York for kind of a larger, they didn't call it this back then, but sort of a later stage startup at CNN back in Mm -hmm. the early 90s when, you know, Ted Turner was still running around the office and screaming. And um, I had started my career at Time, which was much more buttoned up and everybody wore fancy clothes to work every single day. And then when I got to CNN, it was, you know, Ted's cowboy boots and screaming all the time. And I was, you know, I realized that I learned a lot about culture, Mm -hmm. right? And about sort of what, how people work and how people learn. And then I moved out to Silicon Valley, got engaged and moved out with my husband and he was in uh, technology. He was a brand new attorney going into technology law. So everybody said, go West. We were in New York and he said, go West to San Francisco. And I remember coming out and I had been reading about this guy, Steve Jobs and Mm. his, uh, you know, you have to remember that in the early 90s, I mean, he didn't look so bright and shiny, right? Like he was right. sort of, he was a bit tarnished. And, but I said, yeah, but he, he did this really cool computer that actually made these stupid mainframe computers actually usable. And design wise, I thought they were super cool. And anyway, I knew his company was somewhere in the Bay Area. And I had read about this little startup that was a spin out of Apple. And I thought, well, it's pretty close. They're, they'll never hire me because I have no technology experience at Apple, but I don't know, maybe they need somebody to do something at this little startup. So it was a startup that was a Steve idea that mm-hmm. had spun out of Apple that was doing CD-ROM shopping. And I thought, I, I like shopping and they have relationships with J. Crew and, and L.L. Bean. And I thought, wow, I wonder what I could do there. Maybe I could do something I, mm-hmm. it, in between these companies. And and uh, so it was It was five guys who had been at Apple that uh, had started this little startup. And uh, I mean, I remember when I just cold called them and said, hey, I just moved from New York. And they were so intrigued by the fact that I work for CNN and that they, I mean, CNN was, you know, not what it is today. It was just mm-hmm. a much smaller company, but it was kind of taking on the big networks and it was doing mm-hmm. 24-hour news and it was pretty progressive. And yeah. it's like Zoom today. <laughs> yeah, it, it is in many ways. And so people were like, oh, that's so cool. It didn't even matter if I swept floors there, mm-hmm. which I didn't, but it was, I mean, they just loved the brand and they mm-hmm. just wanted me to come in and have coffee with them. And all of a sudden they give me this offer to run business development for them. And my job was to go out and interface with, um, you know, all these different retailers and catalogers. And, and uh, I loved it because the theory of ideas can come from anywhere Mm -hmm. was, was kind of really introduced to me there where there were again, five guys that had all different experience and all different education levels, but they were, it was really about, you had to participate. I mean, frankly, it's a lot of what I see going on in schools today where you you can't just sit there in class and be lectured to, right? right. You have to participate. No, it doesn't work. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't work. work at all. <laughs> and that's the same thing with yeah. what I saw in this, in you know, my first real startup was that mm-hmm. it was just pulling, I was just this girl from New York who had worked for a couple of companies and they wanted to know what I thought about something and how I 
shopped and how I, you know, and, and again, I was just talking from my own experience and sort of what I thought, I didn't know for sure, but they would ask me, are you, are you willing to bet on it? I mean, is that what we should do? And I said, yeah, I think we should try it. And, and then six months after getting there, this company called America Online acquired us and asked me Mm to run this group called shopping and nobody thought e-commerce and shopping in 1995 was going to happen for a while if ever and so i'm running this group and i i mean frankly we were just making stuff up as we went along and just trying and laughing and it was a lot of fun and uh growing like crazy but again once it got to a point where we had been through a hockey stick and it started level off and I was like ah, I'm kind of bored I mean yeah. and I, I don't know what I'm what's next yeah but I wasn't I, but I was you know fine and I, I was compensated well and you know I was I was enjoying it but I just mm-hmm. thought if this is it if this is my life is this I mean that's all I've done you know mm-hmm. right. and and anyway but the main reason I'm I'm sharing this though too is that I think it was amazing training having worked for entrepreneurial environments of all different sizes. And I always share with people something that I think is really important when oftentimes people think any job that they've had is a waste of time. And I'm always the first person to say, Mm -hmm. no, 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 you learn something about yourself. Yes, you really do. Yeah, it's like a C job quote when he's like you can't connect the dots looking forward you can only connect the dots looking backwards so yeah, all those yeah. jobs and places that you worked at were helped you learn what you needed to do for him right. yeah I have, yeah i have a term that i always say well, like when i'm having conversations with kb i tell him like bro everything's useful everything's useful because it really yeah. is it's just all about your angle of how you're looking at it your perception so if you shift your perspective you might shift how you when you shift how you see it you might get another idea and then you might change your whole situation yeah <laughs> so, no it's it's, really it's cool. so true and then and and it's it's also i think knowing that if you look back on things too all of the maybe the worst cases the challenges or the failures that you had but they also give you strategy mm-hmm. to move forward yeah. so even you know I, I would say that one thing that many people commented on as we were he- heading into the pandemic, I was very calm in in March, maybe, you know, too calm for people mm-hmm. because I just said, Me too. listen, we're, you know, this is what's happening and I'm sheltering in place and I'm, you know, doing what I'm doing. But uh, the first thing that I said, having weathered other storms, including for hint, 2008, 2009 was, I'm going to go raise money. And I remember mm-hmm. even our my C- CFO saying to me, you can't raise money right now. And I said, why? And he said, because no one's going to meet with you. It's all on Zoom. I said, no, we, we need to raise money because we're, I want enough money in the bank for the next two years because I don't want to, I mean, if there's a downturn, I, I have a decent amount of money to get through, but I, I want to raise money. And Mm -hmm. I want to, and then I also said to our team of 200 people too, I said, I have a choice. I either furlough some of you uh, with offices closing and our office, our, uh, you know, we call it corporate food service was going away. I said, or we reallocate you to uh, basically go into stores and merchandise, which is, I mean, we're all essential workers. Um, mm-hmm. We're we're a water company that is deemed essential. And so while a lot of people were told to go shelter in place, essential workers were working. So, mm-hmm. I mean, I've been working through the entire thing and giving people, I took on a route uh, in uh, Marin County where I live, mm-hmm. just mm-hmm. uh you know, helping with strategy and what time I would go into not just stocking shelves, but also, you know, telling my team early on uh, that, you know, I'm going in before seven o'clock in the morning because there's no people, right, in in Mm -hmm. the stores. And so I just cruise in there super fast and I go and talk to the manager and I'm like, hey, can I get in here before um, the doors open? And they're like, sure. That's right. fine. And, and I wow. feel better and safer. And so I told my team, I'm like, just get up early, 
go do it mm-hmm. or get in late you know go ask them if they can if you can come at nine after stores close and yeah so again i just or- think there's just a lot um you know that i've learned along the way and by the way we did raise money um mm-hmm. through zoom in in april and uh and you know it can be done but i think having weathered other hard storms i think that you just you use all those hard times for yeah. as steve jobs said for forward um, exactly. to try and figure out what to do better the challenge so is oh. it polishes it polishes you like it's like uh sandpaper so mm-hmm. you, I was just, I've always thought of it like when all this is happening, I was like, it's just going to give us another opportunity as society to see what we're capable of, you know, because we as a whole, as a society have weathered many storms, you know, Mm -hmm. and so it's just showing us too, like, if we want to go forward, there will be things we have to change. And so I feel like this whole thing calls you on the carpet to say, are you willing to go forward and change? Are you really to not be as rough as you are before and be a little more polished to Mm -hmm. learn from what you thought you knew and to go forward? And I feel like that's just where we are. And and that example of you saying it made you go in another direction and you were still able to raise money is like brilliant, you know? You did something different. But if you didn't have that challenge, you may have not ever done that. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> you were basically undaunted. <laughs> yeah, you were I, undaunted. <laughs> I was undaunted and 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 that's what, you know, I share with people. It's just they're all experiences and some of them when you're in it, you're, you know, cursing and thinking, "Oh my god, how am I going to get through this?" But you do, you know, and you get through and maybe some maybe sometimes you do things that, you know, you're not really happy about either along the way, but then you go back and you just think, okay, I'm not going to do that going, I'm not, I'm not going to live there. I mean, I, I tell this one story in my book about, uh, we were in Starbucks and we were in, uh, you know, huge celebration when we got into 11,000 stores and after a year and a half of doing super well, and it was awesome. And then all of a sudden we get an email from the new buyer and we get kicked out of the store and out of all the Starbucks stores. And I'm like, how can that be? We're, you know, we're killing it. We're doing three times what you told us a year and a half ago that we were supposed to be doing. And she apologized and said, this was a message from the top that they were going to start putting food into the case. And, uh, and, you know, they wanted sandwiches and salads and a bunch of stuff that they hadn't had before. And they wanted it because it was a higher ring, higher margins. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, it made business sense to me, but it didn't do anything for my business. It was going to hurt my business. And I had all this inventory in my warehouse that was going to go bad. And I mean, it was a dark right. day. Then... I remember sharing with a friend, you know, how bad this was. And she said, how much of it, it, how much of your business is with Starbucks? And I said, it's 40% of my business. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and that was going away in two weeks. And I said, I don't know what I'm going to do. Right. Like I said, I got inventory. I've got investors. I'm kind of screwed on a lot of levels. Like it's bad. It's really, really bad. And I said, and as I was really venting and kind of thinking this through, I thought, why in the world did I allow 40% of my business to be sitting in the hands of a company or an individual Mm. that just could say goodbye? Right. And I thought, that was really stupid. Mm. That was just so dumb. And, you know, there's no contract, right? There's nothing. And I'm just, and then I, while I was sort of sitting with that whole concept, that's when we ended up getting a phone call from, uh, from Amazon and Amazon, the buyer said, Oh, I buy your product all the time at Starbucks. And I'm thinking, do I tell them that we just got kicked out of Starbucks or do I just (laughs) let them just keep going? And then we, he said, how fast can I get some? Uh, some of the Blackberry Hint and and into we have this new grocery program that we're doing and this is before Amazon Prime and everything and we want to I how what's the lead time and I said well I have 
a few extra truckloads of this product in my warehouse. So if you want to buy it, I'll send a truck today. And he said, great, getting connected with the Amazon buyer. Mm -hmm. And who, by the way, very clearly said to me that he saw it for the first time at Starbucks. So would the Amazon buyer have ever called me if it hadn't been in Starbucks? So that was good. But then, (laughs) right. But but then in addition to that, the thing that I really realized too was that there were some, there were massive lessons there. And and mm-hmm. today when I look at our company and, you know, I'll talk to our sales team about kind of what percent of the business is kind of sitting where and how much, that had a big impact on me and my journey. I'll never have you know, 40% of our business sitting. I don't care who they are. I don't care how great they are and how nice they are. doesn't matter. Like instead, you got to figure out how to, you know, diversify your revenue streams Mm -hmm. and, you know, (laughs) and, and, and then you look at it and I mean, I'll sit there and talk to other entrepreneurs and I mean, in the food industry, if you have a natural food product, I, you know, pick on Whole Foods, like that's the Mecca, right? You want to get your product into Whole Foods. And I'm like, mm-hmm. you'll, you'll eventually get into Whole Foods, but then you got to figure out how to not feel like Whole Foods is the only game in town. Cause when mm-hmm. they think that you think that they're the only game in town, it's like dating, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, it's <laughs> like, you're, I mean, that's what it is, right? Yeah. Then you're, mm-hmm. then they got gotcha. you. Yeah. And I said that that's that's where that's that's the story of being an entrepreneur. Mm. You lose if you, you know, don't put really. all your eggs in one basket. <laughs> totally. Totally. Yeah. And so, I mean, that is there's there's just so many lessons learned. And, you know, I call myself an accidental entrepreneur, but I call myself an accidental author, too, because there's just so many stories along the way that I've realized in my journey that are just. You know, they're just they're I'm just living and doing my thing. But mm-hmm. when I share them with other people, they would say to me when I was out public speaking or, you know, they'd hear me talking about some of these stories on a podcast and they people would write to me and say, you have no idea how that helped me get through exactly like the yeah. just little things like, mm-hmm. you know, looking at my business, differentiating knowing that I can get through a bad day or a failure or whatever. So that was the key reason why I wanted to get this book out. Yeah, the the book's amazing. I read a lot of it and it's just everything about it helps you get through anything. Cause you're like, oh, this difficult thing happens and you're like, we're going to get through it. At least we, what can we do? It was one of my favorite quotes you had in there. It's like, so we can't do this, but what can we do? And that just helps with my life and stuff. And it's like, oh, this is difficult, but like, what can I do? Instead of getting, dwell in on what isn't working dwell on what can work and then focus your energy on that and that's why i love this book there's so many stories about getting through uh, doubt difficulties obstacles that will just motivate anyone but i was curious about your amazon story where you were talking about the uh the, the customer so amazon was like had the data and you wanted to know the data and then they were like no you can't and you were like i should know more, more about my customer than you because it's my product I wanted to know more about that yeah. story and how you got to that. Well, you know, it's, I mean, having kind of grown up in the tech industry and, and uh, working at AOL, I mean, I knew that about our data, right? It was mm-hmm. a proprietary network, AOL was. And so that meant that the data that was going through there was, we had access to it. And as an employee and an executive, I was able to look at a lot of stuff. And I had sort of not forgotten about that, but kind of accepted when I went into the beverage industry and I get first get our product into Whole Foods, Mm -hmm. you know, your goal as an entrepreneur is just to get it on the shelf, right? And then hoping, and you're thinking, okay, there's this data stuff out there, but that's just not really, I mean, it's important, but it's not really important right now because I don't have any sales anyway. Right. But it was the moment when we were in Amazon for about a year And that's when the Amazon buyer was sharing with us that he was looking at data and he saw that the consumer that was buying Hintwater was not buying soda. They weren't buying from Pepsi or Coke, but they were also buying things like diabetes monitors and 
uh, you know, healthier and better for you. They weren't buying candy bars. They, mm-hmm. you know, might have been buying something sort of equally as bad in kind of the the health food bar market, but they were trying, right? Yeah. It said that there was this healthy halo that they wanted to achieve or a yoga mat or whatever. Right. And and they were also buying Hint. And so the Amazon buyer thought that that was just so interesting. And I said, I think it's interesting too, given that's the reason why I started this company. Mm-hmm. Can you give me their emails? And I'd love to write to the customers, call them and talk to them a little bit more yeah, about this to really understand who they are. <laughs> and uh, they said, no, Amazon, this is this is uh, our customer. And I said, well, not really, because they're buying my par- my product. And they mm-hmm. said, yeah, but we buy your product and we sell it. And how is this different yeah. from what you do on Whole Foods or Publix or whatever? And I said, I mean, that was the epiphany. And I said, huh, I guess it's not. It's mm-hmm. really not. And I've been allowing, I've been selling my product to them and then they mark it up and sell it to the consumer and they know much more about my consumer than I do. And right. so that was the moment when I thought, okay, well, how will I get to know my consumer more? I need to start my own website. And exactly. that's when I, seven years ago, I launched drinkhint.com and seems like real easy, right? That it's just... I mean, we're just selling product to the consumer, but what I realized early on was that the food and beverage industry, they don't do that, right? Because they have huge relationships with retailers and it's just not what they do. And today you can find a lot of those products through Amazon, but it's the same, it's where we were seven years ago. They they don't have the data and it's right. what I share with food and beverage companies. I mean, Amazon's great. They'll sell your product mm-hmm. and- But there's just- no customer loyalty. And so eventually they might find another product. It's not based on the product, it's based on, you know, that it's easier to get, but not so much the fact that you can go for, like, you know, when you move forward in life, it's like, oh, I love this, but you're not gonna love it always unless it becomes like, you become loyal to it. Like it's something that you always do. It's in your routine. Yeah, I mean, we love, we still sell on Amazon and we and we love it, but it, it's, I mean, they've got, they have a lot of, they have a lot of loyal people who go on and, you know, they sign up for subscribe and save and then they continue to yeah, get it. But that for, doesn't help. For, for us, it was really, it was always about being able to figure out who this consumer is and how do we mm-hmm. help them get healthier. And even, you know, to this day, I mean, we sell in Costco and Target and Amazon, you can get our product anywhere. And consumers have said to us, uh, oh, well, they're cheaper on these platforms. Mm-hmm. And my response has always been the same thing. You should buy it there. And right, that it's mm-hmm. just, it's about margins and it's about what they are willing to sell the product for and what margin they're operating off of. And right. we sell our product to everybody at the same price and they mark it up. And that's the way retail works. Right. And so, and, works. <laughs> right. And so, and on our website, we sell it and, you know, we follow, we act as the retailer and, And uh, we're not always the cheapest, but what we do promise our consumer is Mm -hmm. that everything we do is on drinkhint.com, including we have over 26 flavors. We have sunscreen now and deodorant and hand sanitizers and some other things that we create. So there's more, right? right? There's more selection. And, but again, people will say, oh, is it newer product that's on your website? Nope. I mean, it's like you can go to Target, you can go to Amazon, you can go to Costco, you get the same stuff. And Mm -hmm. it's just that it's just they don't have my flavor so I can go to your website. And and they don't have the newest, newest, greatest stuff. And I mean, that sort of that strategy Mm -hmm. is, I mean, it's the same thing that happens for in athletic shoes or. Uh, right. There's certain stuff that yeah. you can only buy electronics that you can only buy on the sites, but yeah, you can't. Or, yeah. Right. But we also know that there's consumers that maybe they buy it on the site, but they happen to have to go to Costco to go get other stuff and they'll see our product and they'll buy it there too. And mm-hmm. that's great. I want those <laughs> retailers to be successful. I right. just, 
I just do what I do. And, but again, that sort of theory, I think for us has been, um, it's different. It's different Mm -hmm. than how the food and beverage industry has thought about it and the value of data, but growing up outside of the industry in, in tech, in data, that really has always been my kind of training, although I didn't know it back then, but that's, that's what I'm doing today. Yes, life has a clever way of teaching us that. <laughs> um, I'm curious I, go ahead, Katie. about the uh, writing process of the book. Like, when did you decide to write it and then how did you write it? Was it like an hour a day of writing or was it just like a long project that you did in like a couple of weeks? So it was a journal um, and it's starting about four years ago and I was just doing a ton of, ton of traveling and so I just started typing away on the airplanes and thinking about different stories that I had shared with people and also I was doing a ton of public speaking and people would ask me certain questions. I mean, the sort of top line, I remember thinking uh, early on that there, there was this theory that I was this, you know, risk taker and that I had just, I was so brave and I had no failures and everything was easy. And I would sort of chuckle sitting up on stage when, you know, I, I don't know, just depending on the day, I would think that it was just, I, I, I guess the perception was that I was, you know, superwoman or something that I, it just was poof, you know, it just happened. Mm -hmm. And I've always said that, you know, oftentimes people kind of uh, highlight entrepreneurs as these unicorns or failures, right? And I've always Uh thought the step in between how they, you know, how they figured out the puzzle and what did they do? What did they do wrong? Did a (laughs) pandemic get thrown into the mix, you know, and, and how did they, how did they manage? I thought Mm -hmm. that that is where the true story lies is in yes. between. And so that those were some of the stories that I would use in response when people mm-hmm. would say things like, um, you know, how did you, how did you become so brave, mm-hmm. you know, to be able to start a company and go up against these, you know, multi-billion dollar soda companies. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I would say things like, and I would think about this while I was journaling. I would think about sometimes you, if you think about the, um, you know, too far out, you'll never start. Right. Yeah. Right. And I would think about, I would just think about things like that and think that's how I would think about it. And I would, I would do, I would take little steps and mm-hmm. people say, do you have big to do le- lists? Or I'd say, no, actually, because I know that if I create big to-do less, I won't get most of those things done, and I mm-hmm. feel like a failure when mm-hmm. I but that I can't really achieve much. So I, I actually just I just do a couple too, things. Right? Yeah, mm-hmm. I have easy writing. wins. Yeah, right, I write them. I write. Then, I write yeah. three things a day on the paper to get done each yeah. day, and just and keep going. <laughs> and that's it. But it's little things like that. And again, I, you know, I generally wouldn't even prep for these because I just knew. I knew my story. And the more Mm -hmm. that I would start answering a lot of these questions, I, I really understood and I understood it even more. So just the feedback from the book has just been, uh, wow, I, this is really helping me in Mm -hmm. some way. And again, I, I'm not even trying, right. To like, I just, I sit there and talk about just the story. I, I, person who I used to work with many, many years ago reached out to me and I had a call with him yesterday and talking about his business. And, you know, it's, it's so interesting because again, somebody who had really been kind of at the top of his game and big job title, and suddenly you see his fears and insecurity, right? Mm-hmm. About where he's at uh, in the journey and talking to me about all these VCs that he's having meetings with and, you know, and they're saying no and, and, you know, it's really tough and this and that. And, you know, I said, well, why, why are you raising money through a VC? Like how much money do you need to do this? And I mean, you're not raising that much money. I mean, it may be that they're not going to tell you it's too little money. Instead they might, but how many companies have they funded that have been that small? like that small of a raise. Maybe that's what the problem is, but they're not going to actually tell you, D- 
dude, like this is too small of a raise or too little of an idea. They're mm -hmm. just going to, if you're willing to come in and do a Zoom call with them, they'll sit there and listen and whatever. You you have no time on your hands because you're doing everything, but that's what's happening. And, and, you know, you said to me afterwards, gosh, you just gave me so much clarity. And he's thinking uh, his the industry that he's in is in the music business. And he said all these music people are, they're all telling me that, it's, uh, you know, a bad idea and this and this. And I said, OK, well, maybe they're tainted in some way. Maybe they think maybe they're just I don't know. Go try people who aren't in the music industry. Mm -hmm. Maybe they'll get it. Fresh I don't perspective. Yeah. Right. right? <laughs> and I said, maybe you need a couple of wins in order to mm -hmm. get yourself kind of going. And anyway, so I just. I, again, I think sometimes you just need those little nuggets to know yeah. that you can go further. You just said something very powerful, too. It's the little wins. I think we wait too long to get to the big win that we forget to celebrate that, hey, you just made, you just, that's a milestone. Like, celebrate yourself, you know? Oh, and yeah. uh, when we don't do that, we uh, forget about our own self care, which is what I like to focus on a lot. And when people look at your story, they actually see themselves in there, in them, and they're able to like get a new perspective. And you have been giving people like new like outlooks, and it's very powerful and it's very beautiful. I'm excited to actually take time to read the book. I haven't been able to yet. It's on my like Kindle uh, thingy. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> but I'm gonna I'm gonna get there. I love it because even like just hearing Undaunted, it just it gives you like that power like. It's like, I feel fear, but I have to have courage anyways. Undaunted. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I mean, just imagine I was, as I was sharing with somebody earlier today, just imagine when you feel stuck, just waking up mm -hmm. and doing something that makes you feel a little uncomfortable today. Maybe you're used to, you know, every morning you're making coffee. Maybe you mm -hmm. make tea. Mm. Right. And start to right. Yeah, I mean, being something. comfortable. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And, and it's maybe, an easy way to do it. Yeah. Right. And you just sit there. Maybe maybe you're, you know, every day you, I don't know, turn on, turn on TV. Then all of a sudden don't turn on the TV anymore and just start reading. And how many right. times have you done st something like that where you sort of changed the course a little bit and you realize I actually like doing those things. I like tea. I like reading, right? And, mm -hmm. or, you know, how many times have you sat there and had a, uh, you know, thought, well, I can't do this because I don't have any experience or mm -hmm. I don't know how to write a business plan or whatever. Yeah. I mean, that inner talk, that, all that inner the, doubt, the yeah. inner talk and all the walls that you create that mm -hmm. are yours to break, yeah. right? Exactly. No one's going to break them. I'm not going to break your walls for you, but I can tell you that yeah, you, you got might walls break me for trying. <laughs> right. And yeah. you got walls and it's your and that's what I say to people all the time, too. It's just, you, you know, you've got to figure it out for yourself whether or not yeah. you want to do it. If you want to be an entrepreneur, I'm the first person to say there's way easier ways to make money. Mm -hmm. There there just are. Yeah, and you just got to get out of the psychological locks, you know. Yeah, but also, That's what you, I, call. It, I said, maybe you don't have enough confidence. You say, yeah. oh, I don't want to be an entrepreneur because it's too hard or, you know, or yeah. whatever. I'm like, then don't. Mm -hmm. Don't exactly. do it. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Cool. But those are you know? simple. Yeah. Was because you are actually scared or you have fear, you know, that sometimes those excuses come from that. Like, you actually really want to do it, but you're going to talk yourself out of it because it's scared the task is hard it's an a daunting task well i think it's it's fear but it's also maybe you, you just don't care about it enough and that's cool yeah. too right i think that's so much right i think that it's so much just knowing who you are and that's and that is what i'm saying mm -hmm. in the Purpose. process of right and and you know also Maybe you don't know what your purpose is right now. Yeah. And that's cool too. Yeah. That, but I think that I, again, the people that are living undaunted, that are challenging mm -hmm. themselves, that are going out and having new experiences yeah. and are the ones that are discovering that, their think, purpose. I also think are the happiest. Right. And, and they discover a purpose. Like, cause it, like you have reason, you know, if you have a why for doing something, it makes it that much more impactful. Yeah. You no. Know? Yeah, totally.
I'm like, why am I doing this? It makes no reason. So you don't want to do it anymore. I agree with that. It's yeah. such a pleasure talking to you. Like, I have so many ideas that I didn't even get to like discuss with you. I like, I was like jotting down, but <laughs> what, 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 they'll be useful. Um, but it was such a well. Such thanks a for time. having me, and definitely come by and visit me on social at Kara Golden with an I, and I'm all over. Pretty much everything now. My my uh, kids are somewhat horrified. My my high schooler and my college kids that I'm on TikTok. I've uh, that this is TikTok only in the, and the, only in the last couple of months. Oh, that's laughing. Right. <laughs> and I got into you. the FYP feed, and they're they're like, it's just because you're a you're like a, a boomer, but you're you're an okay boomer. You're sort of like <laughs> kind of fun yeah. to hang out with. So <laughs> TikTok likes to promote you because yeah. you're. You know, so anyway, I just think I think it's fun, but I don't know what I'm doing most of the time. I just <laughs> I okay. just have a good time, and I try With not you. <laughs> yeah, I try not to embarrass myself or my family too much, and uh, and but again, I think it just goes into learning and and just being you know, and I don't know how long I'll do it, but I just always laugh because I just I actually I I like to learn, and that's why I go and do things. Where can um, people get your book if they're interested in purchasing a, purchasing a copy? Any uh, bookstore or uh, or Amazon, and and uh, it's called Undaunted: Overcoming Doubts and Doubters, and okay. uh, hit Wall Street Journal and Amazon bestsellers list. It was uh, awesome, and yeah. So, and it's not just for entrepreneurs, as we were talking about. It's just I think it's really for people who just are trying to figure out. And and kind of who they are and what do they mm -hmm. like and no, and uh, and yeah so well thanks so thing. much you guys oh, yeah I think that's important one last thing I'd like to ask every guest before we end it off is if you had one message broadcast all over the world what would it be it's a short message just try mm -hmm. just go try right it's uh, you you don't get penalized for trying. So it's a it's a, people always asked me when I was going to do the startup, they said, you know, don't you think you'll actually hinder your ability to go back and get a job in tech? And I said, but I did a great job in tech mm -hmm. when I was there. So why? So you don't think I'll be able to get a job? And mm -hmm. and everybody would be like, oh, I don't know. And I said, you know, the risk is is limited. If mm -hmm. I can tell people why I headed in that direction and why I thought it was cool and, you know, and why I turned around and went back the other way. And uh, and I'm very clear about it. But again, if you if you don't go out and try, I think instead. I think that you you regret it, you, you regret will. not doing things and and time goes on too quickly and you just go you just go and you just go yeah. try and, you know, you try not to get hurt and make a fool of yourself too many times, right? And and spend too much money or whatever along the way. But I mean, not everything's going to be perfect. And right. I, but that's the message to people. Just go try. Just try Especially yes. if you can't get, get it out of your head, you know, whether that's to travel to a place or change jobs or move cities or whatever, you know, most of the time you can actually go back. You yes. may not want to, um, but, <laughs> right? But it's mm -hmm. uh, just go, just try. Yeah. And I think that if you live a life of just trying, that it will not be held against you. Yes. I agree wow, with that beautiful. because a, a life unlived is the saddest thing. You don't want to be unlived. It's just yeah. Not... yeah. Yeah. People want people around them that are that try. Right. right. It's like, mm -hmm. you know, if you live a life of saying, nope, 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 nope. Mm -hmm. Right. Then that's that's not. That's not what people want. They want people to say, you know, even if you're bad at something, they, they're like, yeah, he, you know, he really tries, right? Yeah, gave it's his like, best. <laughs> right? They want, they want that because they know right. that you are really trying yeah. and you're want, open to new things. So that's my big advice. Well, that's it. Thanks for listening. You can find all courses at GameDev.tv or in the show notes at a discounted price. Get started with the game development journey today.